All right, welcome back. Mic check one, two, noise floor check. Looks good. Okay, so this video is going to be a LPIC review video. I uh, let's go to my playlist and then go to the LPIC exam and look at the last few videos I made. So I made uh, the video finishing the review materials, and as I discussed, everything you see. On this channel is everything I did to to prepare. I didn't do anything off camera, really. Um, so all I did was read things out loud and, and take a shot at the exercises. And that's really not a good study uh, uh, method. So here comes the next video, fail. <laughs> I only failed by maybe one or two questions, um, but it's uh, still a fail. Um, if I if I would have uh, reviewed and instead of taking it the next day after I finished the reading, I think that would have been an effective strategy. I think to just read through all the text and then go back and have a review process for even just a week, but like, you know, two weeks a month, I think that's a guaranteed pass. So the next video, I discuss whether or not it's worth to have a retake with the AI. And you know what? It really is. I, I only failed by one point uh you know by by a few questions um i already you know i remembered off the top of my head what those what some of the questions i was unsure about i looked them up and it's like oh duh so there are a few oh duh questions where if i go back and take it again you know i'll have i'll instantly have probably enough points to to pass and then um and then the the final uh video here is does it make sense to get the LPIC still? There are other certs like the Red Hat Certified Engineer that are more respected and prestigious. Well, as I discussed in that video, yes it does because not only does it validate a uh, set of skills that often goes unvalidated in a lot of uh, professionals and it's just kind of done you know, on the fly willy nilly with a lot of gaps and holes in, in, in the knowledge and just doing things kind of cargo in a cargo culty style if anyone's familiar with uh what a cargo cult is um which i have mentioned before on this channel so yeah of course it's worth it to validate your skills especially for a cert that has uh free training materials um and that uh is is fairly uh low priced and uh that uh, qualifies you for Linux uh, sysadmin jobs. Like, yeah, of course it's worth it, uh, uh, going for this again. Just as it was before I started the series, uh, it's still the case that the Alpic one for me makes sense. Otherwise, I wouldn't have created video number one. So here we are on video number 79. And I've learned a lot, you know, I'm almost there. I've almost got the cert. So the only thing missing is, is that review process. So for exam number two, I think I'll do the same strategy. I'll read everything through, but then what I'll do is I'll create a view process and the view process, uh, I'm going to establish in this video right here. So let's go to the final, let's go to the second to last. Cause I don't have it saved, uh, the next one to do in that one. Okay, so here's the second to last video, and then let's go to the uh, training materials. I'm not sure what. To, oh, you know what this is? This yeah. So what I what I'd like to do now is develop that review process. So for me, the most important when I was in two year school, every day I did I used this program here called uh, Anki Anki. And you can see I've already kind of loaded it up a bit. So what you do is you do these questions and then uh, open, that's my sedentary time. I'm entitled to some sedentary time if I'd like it. So like you see these, these questions here and then what it does, you say, you say how easy was it for you? And I usually just do again or good. And then if, if, if it's a hard question, it'll, it'll keep asking you it um, until it becomes an easy question. Um, Sorry, I have to, I'm feeling kind of, let me take my sedentary time. I'll be, uh, yeah, let me take my sedentary time. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so so that's the key for me. That, that's really 
what I found makes learning uh, change from, you know, this kind of disempowering experience where you just can't quite get everything right. You kind of know it, you kind of don't to this really like empowering experience where somebody could wake you up in the middle of the night and you would know um, that the slash bin directory contains essential command binaries that need to be available in single user mode. <laughs> like, like you would know that if you climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, passed out, ended up in the hospital, and the first thing, they, they would ask you, what year is it? And you'd, you'd get the year wrong, but you'd get this right. You know, that's what, that's what, uh, what, uh, Ansible can do. So obviously it's a really important tool. Uh, we can see I did kind of load it up already, but, um, I think it needs to be, it needs to be flipped. There's all kinds of user guides and stuff. Uh, a lot of doctors use, use this to get through, uh, med school. So this is a proven, uh, essential way to uh, succeed academically. So uh, what I think I'd, I'd like to do is, is flip these cards because um, I just want it to be that one uh, word associated with that. It's easier to say, oh, I got it fully right. I got it fully wrong. Cause like, you know, slash bin is a clearer, more succinct answer than, uh, you know, cause I could get, I could get this wrong. I could be like essential command binaries that need to be available in multi-user mode. And then I got every word right except for that single word but the whole thing's wrong so i think these these need to be flipped but um this is this is what i want to do is build out an anki deck and then see the deck all the way through and then the other thing i i have been doing off camera since i failed is doing another uh, alpic course there's there's a really good one um lpic-1 if we look that up um by jotty is his name um so this is a really good course i do recommend starting here um because this is just setting up the lab a lot of it is him literally just like waiting for the lab to start to, to uh, boot up so start here if you already have a lab if you don't have a lab and you're here for the very first time never used linux before uh start here but you know i would say this exam isn't for you i would say go for the linux essentials um by the time you're working on the lpic one um you should already know how to uh virtualize a lab or you should have access to a uh the the you should have already be familiar with linux in some way so if you're not if you're coming from zero go for that linux essentials cert um and uh when you go to this course just jump right to this video because uh these these are uh in fact i've tried to take this course before and it's been like i've watched these videos and i just you know it's 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 a uh, 35 minutes of, of content and it, it i was just like oh is the whole course going to be like this like none of this matters like i already have a lab and so but no it's it's, it's a great course just start here and it, it and it's a great course so that's what i'm doing you know they're they're shorter videos um than mine <laughs> for sure <laughs> mine are like an hour hour and a half so uh hopefully it, it's it's possible to uh to get through all of this and then we can see too um we've got some information about like the one that was uh that was removed so we might have like kind of like some more insider information than mine has um you know i'm just i'm i have and i'm not even necessarily like you, you know all my all my work has been on windows machines I've, I've never been given a machine through an employer that runs natively on linux so like you know, I, I've I've gone out to like remote machines. I've worked on like virtual cloud machines that that land to a bash shell. But uh, basically, what I'm saying is, this series is uh is I would say a better series than mine. And and uh, so I'm not gonna, so I'm 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 not going to skip it. I'm I'm working my way through it. I'm not sure which video I'm on now, but um, I, I this will be a part of my review process. Is maybe find another resource and kind of kind of go through that um but that will that will of course add a lot of latency to the to the retake time retake time so the main thing i want to be a part of my retake process though is to go back over and obviously review the materials so like we can see here we've got we've got a partial list of, of used files terms and utilities so like you know if you don't if you don't know very clearly what these are you're screwed like you know you're not going to pass the test so like you have to have these 
uh, so well known that you could be, you know, your last word is not going to be rosebud. It's going to be mod probe. <laughs> so like, you know, that's, that's important. So I will, um, I will delete this a uh, deck and then let's, let's, uh, uh, create a deck and we're going to call it Elpic dash Elpic dash one exam 101 review okay and then um, what I'd like to do is is make as many cards as I can uh, in this uh, in this video here so um, okay and then and then I want to go through and I want to read all of the just short things out loud here so 101.1 is uh, determine and configure hardware settings according to um, Jody, this is this is one of the hardest ones, but I actually did really well on this one. I, I think I showed my scores before. Uh, this is the one that I really messed up on, got wrong, Linux installation and, and package management. Um, so that's the one um, I need to really concern myself with doing better on. But uh, yeah, now we have we have a reference to LPIC objectives. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. This is interesting. Um. Oh, you know what? It's the same thing. So, so you know, this is these are the learning materials, but this looks like uh. Ah, this looks like just a different um resource that that maybe has a. Uh, uh, more complete information on it but yeah I mean that that looks so so yeah I, what I want to do is just um, read through um, as much as I can okay so the weight of this is two I think the maximum weight is four as far as I know um, but um, it, it does not have a high weight. Let's, let's see if we can get kind of like a maximum weight. So it looks like three is probably the maximum weight. So this is definitely uh, a, a highly, you know, it's, it's mid tier, it's midly rated. So, oh, okay, we do have a four. So we have a four, do we have any fives? don't have any fives so far oh uh, we have a two 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 okay so so the the weights are one through four um this is this is a two all right so so the key areas here key knowledge areas are to enable and disable integrated peripherals to differentiate between the various types of mass storage devices, to determine hardware resources for devices, tools, utilities to list various hardware information, for example, LS USB, LS PCI, etc., tools and utilities to manipulate USB devices, and then a conceptual understanding of uh, sys FS. UDEV and DBUS, and this is what the Jody course is, is great at doing because you know he he he's got his own experience and he explains it in a more conceptual way. I mean, these are virtual file systems. It's, it's basically a a representation of things that are happening, uh, like in the I forget exactly where in like the memory or whatever. Um, that um, you know, are are put out in this in this uh kind of um this v v like pseudo way so so you can see what's going on in there even though you can't uh even though they're not like re like regular files on the system all right so next is a partial list of the used files terms and utilities so this is where it really matters to uh have uh anki cards as far as i know so what I w would like to do is for each of these uh, uh, files, terms, and utilities, make an Anki card. So, and then the back will be the, uh, this This will be on the back. 
um, and, and I can I can type it out that's okay so it'll be uh, slash sys and then um, the front um, and uh, looks like it's uh, bold randomly so it'd be nice if I could clear the formatting there we go uh, okay now I'll clear the formatting on here okay and it's in it's in bold for some reason or it's it's in a different text even though I cleared the formatting it's uh, not working so let's do that let's uh, add it and then okay so now it's now it's the same font I want it to be the same font okay so yeah so what we're gonna do is for each of these we're gonna take um, we're gonna make a new card and, and let's just do that uh, right now. We're gonna make a, a blank uh, front. Oh, and it's saying that the field's empty, so we'll just fill it in with uh, with a placeholder. Okay, and we'll do this for each of the terms. Oh, uh, and you have to have it. You have to have it be uh, unique. So we'll just say we'll just say proc for for each. There we go. Because remember, you know, I just got a few questions wrong. So really the name of the game for me is to just get a few more right and then I will pass this this first section. So it's um it's nothing uh too fancy, you know, if there's this is a partial list, so if there's some missing or whatever, it's not a big deal cuz I just uh need enough to pass. So now now let's go back through and then um we will so we'll go to browse here and then we'll go back through so we'll start with the sys card here and then we'll look for slash sys okay so we've got five matches so um um so let's try to get some kind of um explanation about about sys Okay, so so I think I think this is a, a good one. So uh, let's do uh, we're gonna paste this in here, and then we're gonna do a what's called a closed deletion. So uh, that means that this will just be a blank, and then the uh, idea is you need to fill in the blank. So um, I think you can do just a Control Shift C or Shift C. Um, I forget how to do that. Uh, uh, I used to know how to do that. I learned this from a doctor channel and I forgot how to do it. Uh, I mean, honestly, like I can just do it myself. So we're just gonna make one, two, three, four underscores. And then uh, the goal of this question will be to fill in the blank uh, with this uh, down here. So the commands lspci, lsusb, and lsmod act as front ends to read hardware information stored by the operating system. This kind of information is kept in special files in the directory slash proc and slash sys. Okay, and then and then I think I'm gonna add the rest of this as well. So these directories are are mount points to file systems, but not present in a device partition, but only in RAM space used by the kernel to store runtime configuration and information on running processes. Such file systems um, are not intended. Uh, Okay. File systems are not intended for conventional file storage, so they are called pseudo file systems. Only exist while the system is running. The OK, 
okay and then the uh, slash proc directory um, which is which is the answer so for the directory contains information regarding running processes and hardware resources oh you know what that's that's about proc we're, we're learning about sys so we don't need to we don't need to concern ourselves uh, okay so we don't need to concern ourselves with that and uh, there we go so let's move on to the next card you don't have to hit save or anything you just move on all right so the next one is uh, slash dev Okay. Okay, so another directory directly related to devices in a Standard Linux file system is this. Every file inside that is associated with a system device, particularly storage devices. So that's a device DV, so it's dev. All right, let's moving on to the next one. Slash proc. All right, so this one, this one is, um, uh, here so. okay so it's, it's processes for this one so PROC processes there we go um, now this is the other thing we could do here we could get crazy with it and we could uh, have all of these turned into cards as well that's probably a good idea um, that's that's probably a very good idea um, but it's it's just gonna it's just gonna be a lot of cards you know what that that's an amazing idea what we'll do is we'll take anything that's highlighted in gray and we'll make a card out of it um, Except for things like like that, but anything anything in this format, hmm. I mean, I guess we could what we could do is is take it like this and then make is divide it into three columns, and we could like we could like blank this one out, and then like blank this one out and blank this one out. It'd be pretty easy. Huh, I don't know. I overcomplicating it, because as I said, I just need to get one more question right to pass. So making it overcomplicated, I don't think makes any sense at all. So let's move on to the next one, LS mod. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. LS mod isn't even in this. So I think I think that's because it's it's gonna be in the Oh no, it says it says that it is um, just part of uh, this one. Oh, because I did a slash? Yeah, because I did a slash. Okay, perfect. Okay, so so this this will be good for this. Um, it is common to have a large set of loaded kernel modules in a standard Linux file system at any time. The preferable way to interact with them is to use the commands provided by the kmod package, which is a set of tools to handle common tasks with Linux kernel modules like insert, remove, list, check properties, resolve dependencies and aliases. The blank command 
for example, <clears throat> shows all currently loaded modules. So ls mod. Okay, and then I don't think we need to worry about the output necessarily. Um, yeah, so, so let's move on to the next one. The next one is LSPCI. Okay, so this one is, is really uh, easy here. Oh, and you know what? We are, we are going to just naturally uh, go through that syntax. So uh, LSPCI shows all devices currently connected to the PCI, Peripheral Component Interconnect Bus. PCI devices can be either a component attached to the motherboard, like a disk controller or an expansion card fitted into a PCI slot, like an external graphics card. So, um, yeah, so what what shows it all? Uh, LSPCI does. All right, on to the next one. So LSUSB. All right, so same deal. And then uh, mod probe is the last one. Okay, so here we go. Uh, when looking for problems during system diagnostics, it may be useful to unload specific modules currently loaded. The command blank can be used to load both an unload kernels to unload a kernel. Uh, okay, so yep, I think that's that's fine. All right, so yeah, that that looks good. Okay, so so see see, I want to try to keep it simple. So we've only got one, two, three, four, five, or let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards for, for this. And, and that's fine because, um, you know, without speaking, breaking NDA about what's on the test, you know, what I'll say is that if I could have gotten, you know, the, the one missing question that made me fail I could have answered if I had this stuff more clearly uh, memorized and known. So, uh, so yeah, let's uh, move on to uh, the next one. So this is uh, 101.2, boot the system. And then we're going to do uh, the same thing. Um, we're going to kind of ignore these key knowledge areas, unfortunately. Um, I'll read them as part of this uh, review. But we're just going to focus on this partial list of used terms, files, and utilities because if they weren't showing up, because because I'm going to take this to mean that this is what you really, really need to know for the test. Um, so this is 101.2, uh, boot the system. Now to wait three, so there's, it's more likely it's going to be on the test and it's going to come from more points. And then the key knowledge areas are to provide common commands to the bootloader and options to the kernel at boot time. Demonstrate knowledge of the boot sequence from BIOS slash UEFI to boot completion. Understanding of sys v init and systemd. Awareness of upstart. Check boot events in the log files. Okay, and then a partial list of used files, terms, and utilities are what we're going to turn into flashcards. All right, so we'll do the same thing. Uh, we're gonna add just kind of uh, placeholder cards. So D M E S G. All right. All right, and I can do Control Enter just to add it. So then Journal C T L. Right, and then BIOS. UEFI. Oops, uh, and I, I failed uh, that one, but that's. Oh, and I have my sedentary time timer going off. So I will make sure I'm not too sedentary.
All right, so continuing on uh, with these. Um, that's okay that I missed that one, not a big deal. So now, so that was uh, UEFI is the one I messed up on. Okay, and I can do a control up and then control C. Save myself some typing that way. Yeah, a lot of this stuff I just I just didn't learn that well. So, especially at the beginning, because remember, I I talked about I was very open and transparent about, um, you know, my weight gain, my perhaps like depression or whatever, you know, I talked about a lot on this channel, pandemic world A and pandemic world B, and uh, although in some ways I feel like uh, in pandemic world B I am better off um there definitely were some some major challenges uh that i faced in pandemic world b that we all faced of course i mean it's a pandemic my lord um that uh I've, i'm actually still to this day uh kind of struggling to find a good solution to and one of those things is uh weight gain and uh focus and attention All right, so here's here's all the cards, just kind of placeholder cards, and then we'll go through the material and uh, try to get a good uh, question where where those are the answers to really uh, commit those to memory and get get the extra point or two I need to pass the actual exam. All right, so we're gonna go to browse, and then uh, and then yeah, we'll work we'll work uh, top to oh bottom to top. Oh, it changes the order. Shoot. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, you know what we can do? We can uh, sort it by due. There we go. And th yeah, and then work from bottom to top. All right, so let's uh, look up system D. Okay, so, so let's do this. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, this looks good. Um, so we're going to have to... Yeah, this looks good. So blank, one, two, three, four, is a uh, modern system and services manager with a compatibility layer for sysv commands and run levels. Uh, blank. As a concurrent structure, employ sockets and dbus for circuit activation, on-demand, daemon execution, process monitoring with cgroups, snapshot support, system session recovery, mount point control, and a dependency-based service control. In recent years, most uh, major Linux distributions have gradually adopted blank as their default system manager. Looks good. All right, next one is this be in it okay so it looks like uh, this be in it doesn't have uh, huh that's interesting Ah, okay. Well, we kind of left a little bit high and dry here because there's no information about sysv init. Um, so maybe I can go out to the to the web. Oh, I can have sedentary time if I want it. I definitely do want it. 
All right, and actually, um, I think I'll uh, be back in just a minute. Actually, no, you know what, I'm fine. Let's keep going. Okay, so next uh, step, yeah, SysV and Net. So the service based manager, so a service manager based on the SysV standard controls which demons sysv standard controls sysv init standard controls oh you know what yeah let's go to the arch uh there we go here we go this this is pretty good Yeah, let's just go to to a different page and get a get a better answer from there. So on systems based on blank, init is the first process that is executed once the Linux kernel loads. The default init program used by the kernel is um, Okay, so let's let's just keep it simple. Um, the simpler, the better. As I said, I only need a few points to pass. So on systems based on blank, init is the first process that is executed once the Linux uh, kernel loads. So it's going to be sysv init. All right. So the next one is init. Okay, so as soon as the root file system is available, the kernel will mount all file systems configured in slash etsy slash fstab, and then will execute the first program, a utility named uh, named uh, uh, blank. All right, so next one. Okay, so the is a archive containing a file system used as a temporary root file system during the boot process. The main purpose, uh, there you go, looks perfect. See what I mean? So I'm gonna have all of these very readily to mind and should be pretty easy to get a few more points. Okay. All right, next one is kernel. Okay, so in order to control the machine, the operating system's main component, the kernel, uh, must be loaded by a program called the bootloader, which itself is loaded by a pre installed firmware. Uh, okay. All okay, so let's let's do this and then and then um, uh, make it a fill in the blank question.
Okay, so in order to control the machine, the operating system's main component, the blank, must be loaded by a program called a bootloader, which itself is loaded by a pre-installed firmware such as BIOS or UEFI. The bootloader can be customized to pass parameters to the blank, such as which partition contains the root file system or in which mode the operating system should execute. Once, the lo once loaded, the blank continues the boot process, identifying and configuring the hardware. Lastly, the blank calls the utility responsible for starting and managing the system services. So this is the kernel. All right, so bootloader is next. All right, so we'll put it in the same thing and then we'll blank out uh, bootloader. and then UEFI is next. There we go. Just not sure how useful this is going to be. I'm just concerned that um, I'll be spending a lot of time for no reason. All right, and then the BIOS. Okay. All right, that looks good. Next one is journal CTL. All right, that looks good to me. And then D M E S G
Okay. Definitely need to study this one. Okay. All right, so see what I what I'm trying to do here. Now let's see how long that took me. Um, I'm already at the 45 minute mark, so um, yeah, I'm kind of concerned that um, it's taking too long. But uh, you know what? Let's let's do this last one, and then and then you know what? That I'm already a fourth of the way done, so it's it's really not going to take that long. All right, so the next one is change run levels slash boot targets and shut down or reboot system. And this is another weighted three one. So the key knowledge areas are set the default run level or boot target, change between one run levels slash boot targets, including single user mode, shut down and reboot from the command line, alert users before switching run levels slash boot targets or other major system events, properly terminate processes, and then awareness of ACPID, which is um, which stands for um, uh, ACPID, Advanced Configuration and Power uh, Interface. So this is this is the power. This this is uh, it, you know, it seems like like something like Power D or something would be a better answer for that. But uh, it, it, you just, you know, this is why the memorization technique is effective because sometimes it's just not intuitive what it is. All right, so let's do the, the same thing. Uh, we're going to make uh, demi cards and then we're going to fill them in with good content to know for the exam. And it, it doesn't have to be all encompassing. That's okay. We're just going to have the, um, you know, just need to get a few more questions right. I should probably have this at the end because that that means it's a directory. All right, so now it's time to go back through. So we'll sort them by the due dates. Okay, and then we'll go through the training materials, and then that'll be that's all I've got in me now. But uh, I'll do I'll do some more videos like this, uh, and then um, uh, yeah, that'll be that for now. So lesson one. All right, so wall. Let's take a look at that. Okay. I feel like I can just do four unders. Okay, so some of what shutdown does. Yep, looks good.
Alright, so this is another one where I'm kind of left a bit high and dry. Maybe there's a even a typo on this one. Um, let's see what it looks like here. It's controversial. Yeah, it's making a very clear point to do user lib system D. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, stuck here. Here we go. So, yeah, it's making a point to, uh, unless I made a mistake, it's always a possibility. No, it definitely says users lib. So I don't know if there's something special about it being user slash lib that we don't have anything. Huh. So maybe this is it? Um, I guess let's just do some basic, just change the card to be system D. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess I guess it's just going to be system D because I don't see anything about. Um... Oh, see, it makes it makes a very clear difference that there are between two, but it it, it only mentions one of them. I am very confused.
okay, this one is throwing me for a loop because it's, it's making clear that there's a difference in the location of system D, but it's, it's completely missing one of those locations. Yeah, this is kind of frustrating because I'm not sure what they're getting at with including system D twice, but with different paths. Hmm. Um. So we do we do see Etsy system D. Um, I think we we also see lib system D. Yeah. So I think I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this. Yeah, so I think this is good, and then we'll modify. We'll, we'll do a do a fill in the blank here. Okay, and then we'll do uh, uh, do lib system D uh, like that. Uh, we'll do a forward slash. Okay, and then and then we'll do a different card for this one. So that's my that's my protein timer. Um, that I can I can let go for a bit. So I'm gonna let that go for two minutes. Um, then do my sedentary time, and then during my uh, my non sedentary time, and then during my sedentary time, I'll take care of that. So right now, let's uh keep uh, working on these cards so so that's system d under lib let's see uh system d under uh etsy Um, okay, so yeah, this looks good. So system D is also responsible. So then we're going to do a fill in the blank here. Yeah. All right, and then system CTL is next. Um, let's just get a more general, let's get the first instance of C system CTL. Okay, yeah. It looks good. All right, now this one's for system D itself, not relating to the paths. Okay, and there's my sedentary time. That's the one I really can't ignore. Uh, so let's, let's uh, yeah, I can't really ignore that one, so. We're gonna do a reset, five minutes. Then we're gonna create the card. Okay. Um, 
there you go and then um queue it up for the next one and then make the next card while i'm no longer sedentary So next one is tilling it. Okay. Unit dash D. Ah, okay. Perfect. Okay, so we'll take this whole thing. Knit is next. Okay. So let's do this. So, hey, look at that. That's that's not that bad. Like, I did that all in maybe like 20 minutes, and it's it's the whole. You know, I only have to do that three more times, and I've got uh, probably enough. I need to get those extra points and pass. So, um, I think that's going to be it for this uh, video. This is going to be a uh, a, a uh, review video. So this is going to be review strategy part one. Uh, or like, yeah, so retake retake strategy part one, and then I'll, I'll probably do um, the rest of the videos building this out. But unfortunately, I'm going to do a lot of my review stuff just off camera because I just uh, want to, um, you know, get it done faster, um, but not be bound to a camera as I, as I review this. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.